Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the show. It's Ed Fernandez. Just flew in from Atlanta, Georgia. Was out there on a business trip. Woke up at 3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Went to bed. It was really 9 o'clock, I think, Pacific Standard Time, but it was 12 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Time, watching the football game. Man, those poor people, sheesh, football games end at midnight. It's crazy. Anyway, we won. Go Chiefs. So today, the show is going to be called, and it's all about how do you get obedience to God's will? You know, there's a lot of times that we talk about, you know, Lord, I just want your will. Lord, I, I help me help me do your will. Let, let your will be done, not my own. But how do you align your will with his will? where your will and his will become one, and then his will directly tied to obedience becomes one. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about obeying. Obeying is hard to do. When the Bible says, do not fornicate, and you have these kind of lustful events when you're alone or you're bored, but the Bible says, do not fornicate, you disobeyed. When the Bible says not to be angry, and you're always angry, you disobeyed. And so what does it take for us to obey? How do I have my life or my will in my life change so that it's God's will and not mine? In Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So as we go through life, we are in the position to determine, you know, the way we want to live our lives. If God says that his ways are higher than mine, then then how do I get in line with his ways instead of mine? You know, I'm going to digress a little bit here. Prior to this revelation that I'm receiving, and thank you, Lord, for it. I was a rebel, rebellion. I was rebellious. I wanted it my way. You know, it's kind of like a long time ago, there's a commercial called, it's Burger King, hold the lettuce, hold the pickles. You know, you're going to have it your way, right? That's how I wanted it. I, If God told me, don't do this, I did it. If God told me, don't do this, I did it because I was rebellious until I started understanding what that rebellion was doing to me. And I started not being perfect, you know, never going to be perfect, but I started obeying. I started listening. I started wanting to obey. I, I wanted to understand what he wanted from me. You know, the greatest of God's demands is not for us you know, to be on the cross, pick up our cross. I know everyone talks about, you know, you got to pick up your cross daily. It's not even, you know, to serve, you know, you, we, we serve at church or even deny ourselves. The greatest command is to obey. That's, that's the bottom line. In, in Samuel or 1 Samuel chapter 15, God told Saul to destroy the Amalekites, right? There's this king and God told Saul, go, go out there and destroy them all. He actually goes out and, and kills a lot of things, right? He destroys the army, but he brings the king back, and he brings back all the best lambs and goats and livestock, and God is talking to Samuel. Samuel is a, a prophet, right? And he's the voice of God at that time. And Samuel goes up and starts hearing all this noise, you know, ah, 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 these goats and these sheep and everything like that. And, and he tells Saul, he goes, what is this that I hear? And then Saul goes, well, hey, I brought the best for God to sacrifice to God. It's, it's called a sweet savor offering. It's The sweet savor offering is done for Thanksgiving, and it's supposed to give pleasure to God. So he thought, he thought he can bring all this stuff, right? He disobeyed. God said, slaughter everything. Don't bring nothing back. 
but he brings all kinds of stuff back and he he disobeys and he thinks that he can go and give this sweet savor offering and that it's going to be pleasing to God. And Samuel comes up and says, you know what, man? You disobeyed. Today, the Lord has taken this kingdom away from you and has given it to another. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Think about that. When we try to be obedient, I'll use me. Here's, I'm going to use me. I'll give you an example. If God told me, which he did, he told me, no longer do I want you to be angry. I don't want you to speak harshly. You're not allowed to have this explosive, uncontrollable behavior. What does obedience say? Okay, I'm not doing that no more. But see, the funny thing is that your emotions come in and go, oh, Ed, well, you know what? You're an A personality type of guy. You know what? The blood of Jesus and grace is going to cover it. You know, aren't you the one that's always having to change? And, and, and all of a sudden, my mind is like, yeah, you know, it's such a sacrifice. It's so hard. God don't care about that. God don't care about how hard it is. He already knows it's hard. That's the reason why he says obedience is better than sacrifice. It's because even when we sacrifice something, there still will be self-will in it. Self-will. By my might. By my power. Self-will. Obedience alone is absolutely honoring to God. It alone takes God's will as the center. You see, so obedience is such a big deal. And so when we look at Jesus and we compare it to Samuel, okay? So Samuel was told to go slaughter everything. He comes back with stuff he wasn't supposed to, and he he disobeys. And because of that rebellion, The kingdom of God was taken away from him. The kingdom, not the kingdom of God, but the kingdom was taken away from him. And it was given to David. This is when David, um, Samuel, went out and looked for him and anointed him as the new king. But then when you go to the garden, when Jesus is praying, all I've heard is, is preached is that when Jesus sweated the blood, it wasn't because his flesh was weak or that he feared the cup. But what if... It was along the same lines as 1 Samuel 15, 22. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Remember, Saul disobeyed. I disobeyed. I was rebellious. And when I started understanding what rebellion was, who was the first one who rebelled against God? It was Satan. Satan was the first one who rebelled against God. He was thrown out of the kingdom of God, and now he's the prince of darkness, right? So rebellion, in my opinion, is the opposite of obedience. Either you obey or you rebel. Rebel is right in line with what Satan did. Obedience is right in line with what Jesus did. In the garden, Jesus' prayer was the highest form of obedience. You know, read it. You, You should read it. The Lord obeyed God's authority. Jesus obeyed God's authority, i.e. his will. First, more than sacrificing himself on the cross. Right, He obeyed first before even sacrificing himself on the cross because at the end of the day, when you're going to obey, you have to make a decision. Right, Because remember, Jesus said, let this cup pass, but nevertheless, let your will be done, not my own. So he decided to obey, which was first before drinking the cup or going to sacrifice. But even here, He doesn't have his own will in mind, unlike Saul did. Because remember, Saul was supposed to slaughter everything. 
and he had his own will in it. He's like, wow, let me go and let me let me take these livestock, this livestock, and and sacrifice it to God. That that wasn't what God told him to do. That was his own will. But Jesus said, hey, you know what, Lord, if this cup cup can pass me, but nevertheless. Let not let your will be done, not my own. So if if God's will for Jesus was not to go to the cross, then Jesus wouldn't have gone to the cross. Before Jesus knew the will of God, the cup or the cross and God's will were two separate things, okay? After he knew that it was God's will, the two merged and became one, and it started with obedience. You see... If we're always trying, if look, this show is taking steps for you to become a citizen of the kingdom of God so that you can take dominion over this earth for the glory of God. That's what this show is about. I know if you go to some of the beginning episodes, it really wasn't about that. But by the grace of God, it's now on track. And that's what about that's what about that's what this show is about. So because of we're, we're, we're constantly taking baby steps, there are some tough decisions that we have to make in order to become a citizen of the kingdom of God. And those decisions are, am I going to have my will and fulfill my pleasures and fulfill what I want? Or am I going to fulfill God's will and his pleasures and what he wants? In order for us to become citizens of the kingdom of God, remember, this earth is to, supposed to be colonized so that it's a shadow or an image of what the kingdom of God is, the invisible coming down to the visible. And in order for us to start walking with that authority, that authority and what I mean by authority, you got to understand what authority you have. If you run around with a police outfit on and you've got a fake badge and you pull people over, you think you have authority, but you don't have true authority because you haven't been sworn in as a peace officer. You haven't been knighted by the authority to have that power to be able to do that act. Just because you put on a police suit on and you've got this fake badge doesn't mean you have authority. How many of us who say, Jesus, be the Lord and Savior of my life, come live into my heart, how many of us get saved but lack authority? It takes authority to take dominion. It takes authority to cast out devils in Jesus' name. You have to know who you are in him in order to have that authority, which gives you that power. You cannot have authority being disobedient. There may be some of you out there that know what I'm talking about. You know you're supposed to be doing something else, but you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, and you're fighting it. It's time to let it go. It's time to dust yourself off. Look, there's no condemnation here. Maybe there's a little bit of conviction, but there's no condemnation. But it is time. Time is short, man. We don't have a lot of time. A lot of things are happening. A lot of crazy is happening. And I'm telling you, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And we need to prepare ourselves for what is to come. Make sure that you're falling in line with what Jesus did and his obedience to authority, i.e. God's will. Don't rebel and fall under the authority of Satan. Remember, he's the accuser of the brethren, and he goes to God. He still has access to God, and he petitions to God about your actions and my actions. And if your actions and my actions are outside of the will of God, and we break that authority, he has legal right to our lives. We have to stop doing that. It's hard. It's, it's hard. It is hard. Believe me, it's hard. But you know what? As you keep doing it more and more, 
It's kind of like going to the gym. It's kind of like losing weight, right? You get on the scale and you're 245 pounds. You're like, oh my God, I got to lose 20 pounds. And then you start like some keto diet or something and you're starving yourself. You can't have no bread. You get the keto flu. Six weeks later, you get on the scale and you go, whoa, I lost six pounds. All of a sudden now, you start working out harder. You start really watching your food, making sure your water intake is right. And you keep losing weight and losing weight. Why? Because you have been incentivized because you see the results of your hard work. It's the same thing in walking with God. The Bible said it's not by works. I know that. But the Bible also says, you know, I show you my faith with works and those without works. That's what the Bible says. So at some point, there's work to be done. There's not a magic wand. There's no prayer that is going to get you off the hook. Don't think you're off the hook. I know if God is telling you to do something, you're not doing it. There's no way out. Just do it. And I promise you, you're going to start seeing the authority that you have. You're going to start seeing doors open. You know, if you're looking for a business opportunity, if you're looking for a job, if you have legal consequences and you need things to change and you need to have the authority to pray over those things so God can intervene. Remember, you, if, you, if you need to have the authority and where does authority come? It comes through obedience. Authority is God's will. Line up your will with his through obedience. I know you could do it. I'm doing it. And I feel really good about it because the devil has no place in my life. I'm not perfect, but I make sure that I seal up all those cracks so that he, is, he can't petition and mess with me. So I encourage you to do the same. Well, that's it. Hopefully it's feeding you. And thank you for watching the show. Thank you for subscribing. Tell your friends. I'm going to keep coming. My book's almost done. I'll let you know when it's available. But I got to say all the time, you're the best part of the Ed Fernandez Show. Thank you for watching.